Father, I thank you and I praise you with all of my heart. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would direct us and lead us and guide us. Those in the sanctuary, those that may be watching this video at any time live or even a year from now. Lord, I just pray that your spirit would bring an impact to move us to repentance, to salvation, to freedom in Christ. Lord, I pray for not only the nation of America, but for all nations, Lord. I pray for all people, Lord, that they would come to know the love, the grace, and the salvation of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to serve you. I do not belong in your pulpit, but I thank you, Lord, for, Lord, it is your business whom you raise up and whom you put down. And so, Lord, we trust in you. You are eternally good, and we thank you, Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The message this morning is entitled Communism in America. Communism in America. Now, we think about the temptation of Adam and Eve and how Satan set up his kingdom. And I want to talk to you about communism, not just how it exists in, in America and in a form, in a certain form, but how it has always existed in the world. And I, I thank God that we have the teenagers here today. Usually the teenagers are in the back. And I, and I pray that you can put up with uh, me today. Usually we have the teens in the back for Teen Church, and we just started a new curriculum for the teens, and it's a really exciting curriculum. And so um, you will be back there next week, okay? So just bear with me, this old man, for just a little bit. But I, I believe that this message is important for where it will speak to you because you are the next generation. Uh, as a matter of fact, you are that generation now. You, you will inherit what I'm speaking about today. So I believe that it, it is very important that you listen very clearly and more importantly that you hear the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says those who have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen? Amen. The temptation of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, we think about that. We think about, you know, when did Satan set up his kingdom? We know uh, as, as, a, as a Bible believing Christian, we understand what the Bible teaches us that Satan fell. And when he fell from heaven, one third of the angels fell with him. That number was in the billions. And so we, we know that this is true because you can see in the world evil. You can see in the world good. You see both. And, and there is a creator of good. There is a creator of evil. God did not create evil, but God has dealt with evil. And so we see the injustices that are happening in the world, the, the division that is happening in, in our nation and throughout the world. We see the anger. We see the rage. We see the hatred of, of, of different religions, the hatred of, of Jesus Christ, the hatred of Christians. And it goes on and on and on. The Bible says that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy but that Jesus come that you may have life and life abundantly. And it's not just about having life, a, a good life, you know, having a nice car or a, or a nice house. Nothing wrong with those things. But that's not what Christ talked about. Christ talked about having love, joy, and peace. There is a peace that Jesus gives that he says the world cannot give. And, and, and so the, there is a joy that Jesus said he can give that the world cannot comprehend. That there was an understanding that the Lord gives his people that the world cannot understand. That no matter what we go through, no trial, tribulation can defeat us. And so this is where the rubber hits the road in 2021. Where we are going to be tested as, as a Christian worldwide. And, and so there is a driving force behind the, the, the testing and that's God. God will always test us. And there's a driving force behind temptation, and that's Satan. Satan will always tempt us. So there's a difference between being tested and being tempted. Now, we think about Satan, how Satan set up his kingdom. And his kingdom was not set up in, at the fall of, uh, um, of Lucifer when he fell from heaven. That is not when his kingdom was set up. His kingdom was set up in the Garden of Eden. His kingdom was set up in the Garden of Eden. Now, before I get into that and show you biblically how we can understand this better, I want to read to you first in defining communism. Now, there are a couple of people that I have met, very few in my life, that have come from communism. 
uh, communist nations. But, uh, but what I understand is that you don't, have to, you don't have to be born in a communist nation to understand communism. Here's what I think. I think a Bible-believing, a born-again Christian can understand communism. Because when you were not a Christian, you were enslaved to Satan. And when you got set free, you barely begin to understand what communism may be like. Because communism is a political and economic ideology, and it positions itself where it is totally opposite to democracy as we know it, to capitalism as we know it. The Bible says, those who do not work shall not eat. That's in the Old Testament and the New Testament, as where socialism and eventually communism, they say that you work, every one of you work, but it does not belong to you. It belongs to the party. And eventually there is one who rules the entire party. And so everything you own, everything you work for, belongs to the party, the communist party, the, the, the one who is in control of all things. And you see, that's not biblical. Because God says, those who do not work do not eat. You, we understand from the story of Cain and Abel how, how they both worked and how they both brought their offerings to God. But in communism, you bring your offerings to the government. And there was a demonic force behind this government. Now, the, in communist nations, there is no such thing as really as owning land, owning property. It does not belong to you. And if it does, it's, it's not very nice property. It's not very nice uh, vehicles, or so to speak. You're really, you have nothing. Communism is really just an umbrella that ranges in a, in a, in a very many ideologies. There's, there may be different forms of communism, but at the end, it pretty much all comes to the same. Now, there are people today in the world that will tell you that Christianity is rooted in communism. Because we, they, they will tell you in the book of Acts how the Christians sold everything they had and they brought all the money and the finances to the apostles' feet. And they distributed the needs as anyone had a need. That is a great idea, amen? But you see, they pervert the gospel when they say that the Christian church, the church of Acts, was communist. And so we should all be communist because that's a good idea. And, and on the surface, you look at people today in the world there are suffering there are people that are with and there are people that are without and naturally in your heart you would hate to see somebody suffer amen you would hate to see somebody go without and and and, and a, in the heart of and, and i'm not just saying uh, only a christian's heart but in a, a, of a of a person that has just common sense and has the understanding of decency decency you you don't want that kind of hardship on any human being amen amen we're here today and so we have a, a generation that is very very misinformed in america not only about jesus christ but about governments about economics about political ideologies so many things there are so many lies so many deceit and so satan is the father of lies and so when Satan begins to use people to say this and to say that and to say this and to say that, you don't know what to believe anymore. You don't know who's telling the truth. And you just get so frustrated and you just say, forget it. I'm done with the news. I'm done with polit politicians. I'm done with the church. I'm done with all of this stuff. Uh, so many people lie. Everyone is out to get rich. And you see, division comes not from God. But division comes from Satan. It comes from the way his kingdom was set up. Now, that, communism is a, a bad idea. Because everywhere communism was instituted in nations, millions and millions of people paid with their lives. They were murdered. They were executed. Because they did not agree with the leaders of the communist party of that nation. And so... That is the root of communism. You do what they say, or you don't live anymore. Basically, what we see happening as a Christian today is communism is a big deal for us to understand. You want to know why? 
Because for so long, the church was saying, we need to pay attention to Islam. We need to pay attention to Islam. Because, you know, Islam's going to rule the world. Islam's going to rule the world. I've never believed that. I've never believed that. And I even had meetings with pastors. We would talk about these things. And they were like, man, this stuff's on the rise. This is on the rise. Man, it's going to dominate the world. And, and I've always said, no, it's not. And, and you know, I've, I've always had a question mark in my heart about things. About, you know, how does the final Antichrist rise up? And I believe, in the words of, of Reverend Billy Graham from 1952, when he said, communism is the end time religion of Satan. And it's true because as in 1952, even earlier than that, it's still here alive and well. And it is strong and it is a driving force right now in South America. It is a driving force where it is just, it's in America today. It's in our universities. It's an ideology where there needs to be equality. They preach about equality amongst the social classes, that there should be no classes, that we should all be equal. We should all make the same amount of money. We should all live in the same type of homes. We should all have the same type of education, the equal health care and all this and all that. And you know, honestly, you, know, you don't want nobody to suffer. You don't. But they'll appeal to you like this when it's really demonic in nature. Let's look at the Bible. Communism is a big deal. You want to know why this morning? Because Communism will be, it will be the tool that the Antichrist uses to dominate the world. Because communism is the only form of government on the face of the earth that is ideal today to introduce an Antichrist to the world. It truly is. It truly is. And so... When was communism founded? I'll tell you this, in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, communism was founded. The kingdom of Satan began in the Garden of Eden at the temptation of Adam and Eve. Look at Luke chapter four, verse six. This is at the temptation of Jesus Christ. And the devil said to Jesus, all this authority, he says to Jesus, I will give you and their glory of the nations, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Other translations say that it was given to Satan, it was given to him. Who gave the devil the authority of the world? Who? Adam. When Adam was created, the book of Genesis teaches us that God gave Adam dominion over the birds, the animals, over, over all the earth. And when Adam fell, he gave dominion over to Satan. The Bible teaches that we are either a slave to Satan or a slave to God. When that happened, it not only ushered in communism, it ushered in the kingdom of Satan. You see, because this is what Satan said in Genesis 3, verse 4 through 5. The serpent said to the woman in the Garden of Eden, he said, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, Genesis 3, 4 through 5, that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. See, Satan introduced a lie to her. He said, there will be equality if you eat of this tree that God told you not to eat of. See, he appealed to something every human being has, and, and that is there is something within us, not the sin nature in Adam and Eve, but it was something that was also found in, in Lucifer. Iniquity was found in him. Wickedness was found in him. And Satan appealed to something that is so deep within the human DNA that Eve looked at this and she said, I will be like God. I will have equality. See, God had already met the need of Adam and Eve. He had provided for them. They had eternal life. All the food they wanted was going to be there. Amen? That they could work and they, were not, they would not have to work by the sweat of their brow. They would not have to worry about all, anything. Everything was being provided by the kingdom of God for Adam and Eve. So they were under the kingdom of God at this time. 
But when Satan came in, he said, but if you do what I tell you to do, there will be equality. That is exactly what communism says in the very beginning. That if you follow us, if you do what we say, there will be equality across the board. They just passed in our government the Equality Act. Does this sound familiar, guys? You see, they're passing the Equality Act in regards to immorality. But you see, in the beginning, Satan was attacking this, not from an immoral issue, but he was attacking this from being equal with God, from a spiritual issue. And so if the spiritual is attacked first, then everything else will cave in like we see today, immorality as well, physically. And this is how communism began in the Garden of Eden. Satan appealed. And Satan said, you will be equal. That is exactly what communism says today. Amen? You're following me. Now watch this. In Genesis 3, 17 through 19, then God, then to Adam, God said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake, in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles, it shall bring forth to you, and you shall eat the herb of the field, in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. God had made Adam out of dust, but he became alive. He became, he became beautiful in God's eyes. He was God's masterpiece. But God tells Adam something. And basically you can read this, that Adam has left the kingdom of God. Because at that time he was separated from God. You remember Adam and Eve, they were cast out of the garden and the, angel, the cherubim angels were put there with flashing swords to keep them out. Because God said, if they eat of the tree, uh, of the fruit I told them not to eat of, and they're in their sin, then they will live like this forever. So they were cast out of the Garden of Eden. They, they were cast out from the kingdom of God because sin was in them now. They were separated. That's why Jesus had to come. And so the kingdom of God was now shut from them. They now belonged to another kingdom. They had a debt that they had to pay required by law for the wages of sin is death. That's the kingdom of Satan. People apart from the kingdom of God today, they work, they work to inherit death. And that's the way it is in communism. You work and all you inherit is death, pain, misery. Apart from Christ in your life today, that is all you know. Suffering, depression, anxiety. That is why so many people are on so much medications. That's why we have such a drug epidemic today. Because people want to escape the reality of the kingdom that they belong to, the kingdom of Satan. When Jesus said, I come to set the captive free. See, Jesus is now, he is appealing to them the kingdom that once was. But Satan founded communism. And men have taken his kingdom and have advanced it into where you don't even see Satan, but you see the corrupt power of men. Here's another good idea. Look. When Noah and his sons came out of the flood, they came out of the ark, what did God tell them? God said, go out and fill the earth and multiply. They didn't do that. It was a command from God to go out and fill the earth, but they did not do that. The Bible teaches us that they all stayed put and they built a great tower of Babel, meaning confusion, to try and boast in how great man was becoming. God came down, saw it, he broke the, the tower down, gave them all different languages, and it forced them to scatter throughout the earth. Do you notice that in that whole story, Satan was never mentioned? But there was somebody behind that scene instigating rebellion, and it was Satan. Because Satan knew what the Word of God said. Go out, fill the earth, spread out. And this displeased God when they stayed put. They were listening to somebody. They were listening to a different idea once again, man was. And that is the same thing today. We may not see Satan in the news, but we see how he is instigating people who are a slave to his kingdom. He's pushing this ideology. And communism, which is the most cruelest form of government this world has ever known, 
because it's always has been since the Garden of Eden. I will tell you right now, it will, and I love this nation. I thank God I'm an American, and, but this nation has never been a Christian nation. This nation is not perfect, and I tell you on the authority of the Word of God, this will become a communist nation. Just this past week was National Day of Prayer. I remember how we used to get excited about National Day of Prayer. Our President Biden didn't not even mention God. It doesn't surprise me. You know, because in my heart, the true Christians, they know that that is just for show. That's all it is. It's for show. It's for the people of the world. No, the true Christian is on their knees every day. Every day, they're praying at home. They're praying with their home church because they know what is about to hit the entire world. God is going to shake this earth one more time, but that which cannot be shaken shall not fall to the ground. Many people will not welcome this message that has been spoken this morning because it is a message that tests you, that will put you to the test in your faith with Jesus Christ. And it will remind you of your sin, that there is a need that you must repent of your sin and turn to Christ for the forgiveness of your sin. That is the only message the church has been commissioned to preach and to raise up Christians, to raise up disciples. Now, we see how to the dust you shall return. Colossians 3.23 says that, and whatever you do, you do it as heartily as unto the Lord and not to men. This is a New Testament scripture. The Lord is reminding through the Apostle Paul that we as Christians, we may be in this world and do you know, understand that there were many throughout the ages, there have been many types of kingdoms, monarchies, uh, communists, a democracy like ours, socialist nations. Christians have lived through all of those types of governments. And when you read that scripture, Colossians 3.23, Paul is telling the Christian, basically, no matter where you are, no matter where you live, you work and you work unto the Lord, not to men. Because you, Christian, you don't belong to the nations. You belong to another kingdom, the kingdom of God. And that is what Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Jesus was reintroducing his kingdom to the world, which once was. But Satan had instituted his kingdom, and it was founded, it still is, and it will end with communism. You know, you cannot, you cannot hide out sin for too long. You remember when, when God told the Israelites, don't take nothing from the enemy, and one of them did, and he went and hid the treasure in his tent, and God exposed them, and they dealt with that man and his family severely. You cannot hide sin. You cannot hide the plans of Satan for too long. In the last day that we are in, what Satan has been using since the Garden of Eden is now clearly exposed. We see Satan and his kingdom for what it truly is. A communist nation, a communist kingdom. Again, communism is ruthless. And it tells you there must be equality for everyone. Do you know today in America there are so many young people that are so easily ready to say, yes, let's, I want to be, I am a socialist. They have no idea what that means. They have no idea what that means, but guess what? They're about to find out because this nation, the nation that I love, will one day go down that road fully. I've said, and I said it before, what I have seen that has troubled my heart for so long is that Republicans and de Democrats, Christians have been caught up in all of that mess and a Christian should not have been caught up in that. Christians side with conservatives, Christians side with Republicans, some Christians side with Democrats. And I'm here to tell you that one day, Republican and Democrat will unite and once again, they will defy God. That is what is going to happen. You want to know why? Because just because you're a Republican doesn't mean that you're a Christian. Just because you're a conservative doesn't mean that you're a Christian. A Christian is someone who belongs to the kingdom of God, whose eyes and ears 
are set on another place, not on this place. You don't put your hope in this government. I hear many Christians today saying, we need to pray, we need to do this, we need to do that, we need to win the Senate back. In 2022, we're going to win back the Senate, we're going to change things around. I'm like, you're putting all your hope in that. Hey, that, if you feel led by God to run, run. Go for President, Senate, Congress, whatever, go for it. But that is not where our hope is. I see more Christians doing that than, whether, than, than filling the house of God and filling the prayer room. And fill it when, when we're, Christians are called to come together to pray, they don't come. But yet you'd rather show up at the ballot box than the prayer meeting. And that's where the power of God is found, in the prayer meeting, not in the ballot box. There's nothing wrong with going to the ballot box. But if you don't go to the prayer meeting first, the, power, the ballot box has no power. What got the Christians through communism? What got Christians through the days of, of um, Roman dictators and all that? It was prayer. They were killed. They were pulled from limb to limb. Mothers, daughters, sons, fathers. Their bodies thrown into Roman Colosseums. Tor torn to pieces by the jaws of lions and tigers. It sounds like a fairy tale, doesn't it? But we're headed that way right now. We're headed that way. You, you know, I love, I love martial arts, I do. I love, the, I love the, the, the skill of martial arts, but it's becoming more and more violent. And, and our crowds nation, uh, worldwide are set up the more blood, the better. They're becoming more bloodthirsty. They're entertained by the breaking of bones. They're entertained by these things. And, and you know, again, it's, it, it's good to see. Uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with, with martial arts. There's nothing wrong with, with having the skill to defend yourself. But when the Christian is missing the prayer meeting, when the Christian is missing the things of God, and when the Christian is, is focused and putting their money on those things, then rather into the kingdom of God, we have a serious problem. And that is why we see our nation going the way it's going, America. We see that it is so divided, that it's so filled with immorality, that, that they don't know their left hand from their right hand. They don't know if they're male, female, so they say, well, we're, they make up a new gender now because they're so lost. They're so lost. And this is heartbreaking. There's people that come to church and they sleep. They're hearing a message that is from the Lord God Almighty, not from Michael. Throughout the years that I've preached, I've seen people just sleep and, and, and I see them leave and they lose their families because the message, they never allowed to penetrate their life. And this is what we see happening. Church is just entertaining. Church is just candy coating the gospel of Christ. Churches today, they're, they're dancing to the music of, of the world, dancing to a different tune and, not to, the, and not, not to the heart cry of Jesus. This is what we see. This is what we've inherited. And what are we passing down to the next generation? They will inherit a communist nation. They will inherit it. It is here. It is now. There are many, so to speak, communists in our education system. There are many communists in our, in our government today. There are congressmen, congresswomen, senators in the Oval Office. They're God-haters. They believe in killing the unborn. They believe in redefining what God instituted as marriage between a, a, a man and a woman. And they tell you, shh, don't say nothing. Agree with us or don't, or we'll take you off of Facebook. We'll take you off of Twitter. They're silencing. What, what, isn't this as America? Isn't this supposed to be America? Where everyone has an opinion? It once used to be America. But what happened when they used to burn the flags? Oh, you have to protect their right. When they used to burn the flags on the streets of America, they used to burn the U.S. flag. They, they, they protect their right. They have a right to do that. They have a right to do that. Let them do that. But now you, now you just say something that's against those people's ideology, then you're silenced. And that's what communism is in its infancy. That is what communism is in its infancy. And its end time goal is to eventually silence the preaching of the gospel. Communism, Satan knows how powerful the gospel is. That's why he just doesn't go for it straight head on. 
He takes everything else around it. Because the book of Ecclesiastes says, one strand can easily be broken. Two strands cannot be broken. Three cannot be broken. Three, pieces, three strands of rope cannot be broken, says the book of Ecclesiastes. Satan understands this principle that when you take this out, when you take that out, when you take that out, when you take that out, then that one doesn't have a chance. And that is how Satan has come against the United States of America through our education system. It breaks my heart. You know, as a church, we have had this K-12 through school now completing five years. And we have met complete opposition in this community where I see parents, and I've had people say, well, it's, it's not that they don't want to send their kids to school here. They can't afford it. I believe that's a lie from the pits of hell. I believe it is. Because I, I, if you know, you can add up how much money do you spend going to the movies in a year? How much money do you spend going to the convenience store in a year? Substitute that for just $3,000 a year to send your kid to a Christian school? No, 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 I need this. I need to do that. Christian parents, clueless about what is happening in the public school system today. Because they're so focused on their own life, they neglect the well-being of their children. And that's what Jesus says, woe to those who hinder the children from coming to me. It breaks my heart. In a town of almost 30,000 people, we have 11 students. I've prayed, I've prayed, you've prayed, we've prayed to try and make an impact for people, for, for families' lives. And the enemy would want you to become discouraged. So do we give up? Or do we just keep fighting? Because as a spirit-filled Christian, you know what the end result is. In communism, you work, but you do not harvest what belongs to you. A good example is this, look. Genesis 4, 4 through 5. Abel also brought of the firstborn his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry at his countenance and fell. You see, in communism, you work, but it doesn't belong to you. And why do you think God rejected Cain's offering? Because Cain did not belong to God. Did you hear that? Cain did not belong to God. Your kingdom is of another place, Cain. Take it away. But he accepted Abel. The book of Hebrews says that it was faith that God found in Abel. The blood of Abel still cries out of, of faith. Abel belonged to God. But in communism, you work. In the kingdom of Satan, you work. No matter what you do, if you are not a spirit-filled Christian saved by the grace of Jesus Christ, no matter what you do, no matter how many people you feed, that work cannot save you. Jesus will not accept that because you belong to another kingdom. Your sin must be dealt with to enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus says, if one is not born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What does that mean, being born again? Enter back into your mama's womb. Happy Mother's Day. Try and take that big kid back in. Amen? Our daughter didn't want to come out. She was holding on to my wife's liver and in there 30-something hours in labor. Mariana did not want to come out. Mikey, he was the total opposite. He came out running. <laughs> he says, I'm gone. I'm done. How are we born again? Repent of your sins. Acknowledge that you are a sinner in need of saving. Ask Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins and follow him all the days of your life and you will be saved and the Lord will baptize you with his Holy Spirit. You are now a new creation. Those who are in Christ are a new creation because you are now a part of his kingdom. You no longer belong to the communist kingdom 
of Satan. Satan is engulfing the nations one by one, one by one, and America is next. Because as of America falls, so does the entire Western Hemisphere. And when that happens, the final Antichrist will usher in. This is what is actually behind the scenes. This is what is actually happening. Some of you said, no, I want to have kids. Hold on, Jesus. I want to become a lawyer first. I want to have this kind of life. That's not up to us. God has been patient for 2,000 human years. The gospel has been preached for over 2,000 years now. And I tell you on the authority of the word of God, the nations are now falling one by one to the kingdom of Satan. That's what the book of Revelation says. It says all, all will fall to him. Now, as I move quickly, because I know I could preach for two, three hours, right, young people? Romans 6, 20 through 23. Paul says, for when you were slaves of sin, meaning when you were not a Christian, you hear that? You were slaves of sin. You were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Look at this in two ways, in the spiritual and in the physical. Communism, look at it in the spiritual and look at it in the physical. You look at it in the physical, communism, it's, it, it was Russia. It's China today. It's a lot of uh, North Korea, uh, Vietnam, you know, we could go on and on, Cuba. That, that, that's communism in the physical. But the reason why that is in the physical manifested is because communism in the spiritual, the kingdom of Satan, there's a greater work happening where he is engulfing the nations as he went and he first engulfed Adam and Eve with his new kingdom. The scripture we just read clearly teaches you are a slave to sin or you are a slave to God. But now that you are a slave to God, you inherit eternal life. What kingdom will you belong to? What kingdom will you belong to? Do you belong to Jesus? Because if you do, you are inheriting eternal life. But if you belong to the kingdom of Satan, this world, whether you still live in America and we still have the freedoms, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's all rooted spiritually in communism, the kingdom of Satan. You're reaping death. You see, as a Christian, if I'm wrong and I die, I have nothing to lose. But unbeliever, if you're wrong and you die, you have everything to lose. If you think that I'm just saying a fairy tale, that I'm just telling a, a, sto a fake story, I have nothing to lose. But you do when you close your eyes and enter into eternity. You see, you get one shot at heaven and you get one shot at hell. God has always given us free choice. We choose. We chose as a nation. Some people could say, but the elections were rigged. Don't matter. We have chose as a nation who we want to lead us. And we're going down that slippery slope of communism. We're headed that way. We're, we're on the road. We're coming to the gates where the church in America will endure severe persecution very soon. It's going to happen. I'm not here to instill hate. I am excited. I am excited because I know that the end for the church is near. That's what Jesus said. You know, his end was near. He was new. He was about to go to the cross, but he looked at Pilate and he said, my kingdom is of another world. My kingdom, Jesus, is in you. My hope is in you, Jesus. See, somebody is lying to us. In John 8, Jesus says, you are of your father, the devil. He was telling the Jews that because they were denying him. And the desires of your father, you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and Jesus goes on to say, and he does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. You see today, so many lies, so many fabrications of stories on news, 
media, social media, everything. It all comes from Satan. He is the father of lies. He was a murderer from the beginning. From the beginning, he went into the Garden of Eden and he killed Adam and Eve. He took away the kingdom of God from them and he instituted his own kingdom. The Bible says that he is the God of this world. And so this is Jesus saying who Satan is. Today we look at China. The leader of today's communist nations, he says that they are now on equal par with the United States in every area of life. Political, financial, in every way. China is now becoming the superpower of the world. You know, it's so funny because the book of Revelations mentions that part of the world at the Battle of Armageddon. Read this, Revelation 12, Revelation 16, 12 through 16 says this, then the sixth angel, this talks about a future war that's coming, a future war that is coming. It says, then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. You hear that? That's talking about China. That's not talking about the Middle East. It's talking about the East, the Far East, China, North Korea. All the Asian nations are going to reunite. Why do you think China is fighting for Taiwan right now? Why do you think China is fighting for certain nations right now? Because this is a biblical call for the Asian nations. They will reunite. They will come together. Because in the Battle of Armageddon, the Euphrates River will dry up for the, for, it says here, look, the kings, not the king, the kings, the nations of the East, the Asians. And today, China is the leader of the communist nations worldwide. China is. They're rising up for such a time as this to be the most superpower dominant force on the face of the earth. Look what else it goes on to say. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For these are the spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief, says Jesus. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And they gathered them together to the place called, in Hebrew, Armageddon. Now, this is talking about the war that will happen at the end of the seven-year tribulation age. We are on the cresp of the seven-year tribulation age. Now, those online, this may not, you may not know a clue what I'm talking about, but you see the violence happening in the world today. Y young people who have a Christian parent, how would you feel one day if you woke up and your mom and daddy suddenly disappeared? They're not there no more. And I'm talking to you that may be watching online. Show this to your child. It's called the rapture of the church. See, God knows the age of accountability. God knows of a 15-year-old, of a 17-year-old, maybe even a 13-year-old, if they're accountable for their sins. Only God knows that. And what if a, a, such a youth experiences their mother and father who are always telling them about Christ? It's disappeared suddenly. The Bible talks about that one day Christ will come for the church worldwide and we will be taken up into heaven, suddenly gone. It's happened twice before. With Enoch and Elijah, they simply were just taken up into heaven. They never died. God can do that. And God will do that. I believe we need to pray for our generation that they would come alive to the things of God. Because there will be many kids that will be fatherless, motherless. And that is when that final, final antichrist will come and he'll say, I'll be your father. I'll be your mother. Oh, by the way, that's what they say in communism, right? I'm your father. I'm your mother. I am everything. Isn't that what they say? Adam and Eve were tempted in the garden and they failed. Jesus was tempted in the wilderness and he was victorious. There is no garden for the Christian today. There never will be. So the Christian must understand that as we follow Christ, we are to go into the wilderness so that we can find victory ourselves as Jesus was victorious. We are more 
than conquerors through Christ Jesus, but we are called to fight the good fight. Many are called, few are chosen. The road to hell is wide, and many shall find it. The road to heaven is narrow, only a few shall find it. Jesus will say to those on the left, depart from me, I never knew you. But didn't we pray in your name, Jesus? Didn't we call out, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You work evil because you belonged to a kingdom of works of evil, of communism. And communists, again, you work and you don't get to reap the blessing, but it belongs to another. In, in the kingdom of Satan, all that you do is unto Satan. And he owns you. He dictates your life. And that has spilled over into the creation of governments. And we see that it is happening in America. We are seeing the transition of our government before our very eyes today. We are seeing this. Media, politicians, they lie, they, they, they divide, they introduce systematic racism, critical race theory, they talk about all these things. It is Satan behind it all. It is Satan behind it all. Does America look that way? Is America really a, a, a nation that is systematically racist? Is America a, a, a nation that's systematically racist? Really? I mean, look at all the athletes. Look at all the stars look, in the corporate world. Executives, CEOs. They're different colors. They're different colors. America is a nation where no matter what color or religion you are, you can be whoever you want to be. How are we a systematic racist nation? How? It's a lie from Satan. And anybody who believes that is believing the lies of the devil. This is the most freest country on the face of the earth, but it's that freedom that we've had that has backfired on us and has in introduced not only sexual morality and lust and perversion, but when those things creep in, it's eventually, end time goal is communism, a new form of government, physically and spiritually. This is a message of warning this is a message of warning. Somebody is lying to us, America. Christian, somebody is lying. And Jesus said, Satan is the father of lies. Somebody is lying to you. Satan used lies to put Jesus on the cross. And he sees you carrying your cross, Christian. And he's going to get put lies on you to put you off of the cross. You're supposed to carry your own cross too, aren't you, Christian? Liberalism, racism, immorality. It, it, it's what communists are using to destroy the peoples of the world, not just America. But much more, it's even destroying the church. It's destroying the church. We are witnessing a change of government in America, Republican and Democrat. They will one day unite. They will one day fully defy God because division comes from Satan. What does Satan say? I mean, what does the Bible say about Satan? A house divided cannot stand. A house divided cannot stand. Our Congress... Our house is divided. It's not going to stand. And if the church of God is divided, it's not going to stand either. But I hold on to that biblical promise, the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. Do you believe in the biblical promises of the Lord? Then go after it. Go back to the Lord. Go back to the body of Christ. Go back to the prayer room. Get on your knees. Thank Him. Praise Him. Adore Him. Worship Him. Honor him. Honor the king. He is worthy to be praised. His name is Jesus. Amen. That is who he is. He is our king. He is our Lord. He is our savior. He is our redeemer. He is our sanctifier. He is our provider. He, his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Give God praise in his house. Give God praise in his house. Give God praise. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. I pray you receive that message. Receive that message in Jesus.